Take my hands, take my feet, touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, take my feet, touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Take my hands, take my feet, touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. You can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Oh, take my hands, take my feet, touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. can use me you can use anything lord you can use me oh take my hands take my feet touch my heart lord speak through me you can use anything lord you can use me you can use anything lord you can use me. You can use anything, Lord. You can use me. Take my hands, take my feet, touch my heart, Lord. Speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Oh, take my hands, take my feet, touch my heart, Lord, speak through me. If you can use anything, Lord, you can use me. Nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves. When my heart becomes free and my shame is. Fill the atmosphere. 
There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted. I've tasted the sweetest of loves when my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord, and Holy Spirit, you are welcome here.
of my testimony, overcomer, more than a conqueror, I'm a winner, the joy of the Lord is my strength, I have dominion, and I walk in authority, I've been washed in the blood, kept by his love, I'm filled with the spirit, and by his stripes I'm healed, I'm free, yes, Jesus gave me the victory, overcomer, more than a conqueror, I'm a winner. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I have dominion and I walk in authority. I've been washed in the blood, kept by his love. I'm filled with the spirit and by his stripes I'm healed. I'm free. Jesus gave me the victory. Overcomer, I'm an overcomer. By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of my testimony, overcomer, I'm an overcomer. By the blood of the Lamb, by the word of my testimony, overcomer, I'm an overcomer. By the blood of the Lamb. By the word of my testimony.
Hallelujah. Come on, let's reach to the Lord right now. We love you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Help us, God, today. Lord Jesus, help us right now. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. We worship you, Lord. We love you, God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. We magnify you, O oh God, today. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God bless you. you. May be seated for a moment or two here today. I want to say it is an honor to be here. Give honor to the good pastor of this church, Brother Smith, him and his wife and family, even though they may not be here today. Amen. It's always a privilege to get to stand in the pulpit, preach the word of the Lord, but it especially means a lot to me whenever a pastor entrusts a church, amen, to a young man like myself when he goes out of town. Praise God. We want to be a blessing today. How many of you need a blessing today? How many of you want a blessing today? Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, amen. want to say it's good to see everybody else here today. God bless all the faithful saints of God for being here. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I believe God still got some good things in store for those that love him. Amen. For some odd reason, we've got this idea that whenever the Bible said in the last days perilous times is going to come, that that translates into God wasn't going to do any good things anymore. God wasn't going to move like he used to move anymore. But I want you to know there's another scripture in the Bible that says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. Glory to God. I understand that in the last days there's going to come mockers walking after their own lusts. But the Bible also said in the last days, saith God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Is this the last days? If this is the last days, then we have to take that scripture along with all the rest of them. Amen. There might be mockers and scoffers and perilous times, but in the middle of all of that, there's still going to be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost that God wants to do. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God's not going to be done until he's ready to take his church out of here. And until God takes his church out of here, he's still going to fill people with the Holy Ghost. There's still going to be somebody that gets their healing. There's still going to be somebody that gets a miracle. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Amen. Praise God. Praise God. And it's not over until the trumpet sounds. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just because there's a lot of things going on in this world does not mean God's gotten weak. I've said it before. I'll say it again. COVID did not diminish the power of my God. Hallelujah. There's no sickness on earth that's stronger than the power of my God. Hallelujah. There's no devil in hell that suddenly appeared on the scene that happens to have more power than my God does. Hallelujah. Jesus still has all power in heaven and earth. Glory to God. Amen. It's not time to get discouraged. It's time to look up your redemption still drawing nigh. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. It's good to be in church. Good to have the Holy Ghost and be baptized in Jesus' name. Tonight would be a good night for somebody to get the Holy Ghost for the first time. And it would be a good night for some to get the Holy Ghost all over again a second, third, fourth, one hundredth time. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 So it is good to be here today. Amen. Glory to God. Glad my family is with me. I try to take them every time I, I go somewhere to preach. I know sometimes it's not always possible, but... I try to take them every single time. Amen. Glory to God. I want you kids, why don't you go ahead and come sing? Go ahead. And their heart rates just sped up and butterflies went crazy. Just blast it out like you would if you was at home. Amen. Praise the Lord. And while they're getting everything ready, I want my wife to go ahead and stand and testify. I'm thankful for my wife. Amen. 
Amen. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Jeremiah, won't you borrow this mic? Amen. While he sings the verses, he'll sing them in and let you share it, all right? All right. Everybody say, Lord bless them. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God. God bless you. you. may be seated for a little bit here today. Glory to God. Thank God for my kids. Thank God for what the Lord's doing in their life. Amen. A lot of people talk about investments. 
investments here, investments there, and, and all that. Buy a house, it'll be your biggest investment. Watch out about buying a car, it may not be a good investment. But I want you to know one of the greatest, outside of your own personal salvation, one of the greatest investments you'll ever make is your kids. That's right. That's right. Let me tell you, money, sinking money into your kids, while may give them some good memories, will never replace the memory of the time you spent with them, especially the time spent living for God. Amen. Is it all right just to step back for a moment, talk just for a little bit? The world's trying to push our children away, push the kids away. Let me tell you something. There should never even be a debate about whether abortion should be even legal or not. That should not even be up for debate. But the very fact that it is goes to show that there are some incredibly selfish people in this world today. And usually one of the very biggest reasons for it is, uh, well, I'm just not ready or I don't have everything. So let me tell you something. Amen. Let, let, let me tell you something. Glory to God. All that does is go to show that people are being incredibly selfish. Well, you can shout amen or, or, or not. It's the truth anyhow. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. The Bible says children are in heritage of the Lord. Our pastors preached back home and talked about how that means an heirloom, something treasured, something that's handed down, amen, down uh, through the generations. Glory to God. I wish people treated their kids as good as they treated the things they got from grandma and grandpa years ago or their daddy and mommy years ago. If you, treasured, if, you, if you treasured your children as much as some people treasured their heirlooms, they would be, amen, uh, they would be set up very well today. Now, I'm not talking about in money, but I'll be talking about in time and the memories that they have. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me tell you, you best raise your children to live for God. And you best raise your children to do what's right. And you best raise your children to do what God wants them to do. Hallelujah. We'll praise the Lord, church. We'll praise the Lord, church. Amen. I, I feel a little pushback on this, but I'm here to tell you right now, glory to God, there's no greater investment that you can have in this life than to make sure your children, amen, are ready to go. Glory to God. They sit there and listen to you and watch you and soak up what you say and what you do like a wet sponge. That's why it's so important that you live for God and you do what's right and you be what God wants you to be. Hallelujah, because they're watching how you live. You can say all the things you want, but if you're a hypocrite, buddy, they're going to tell it, glory to God. They're going to see it. They're going to know it. They're going to realize it. That's why you'd better live the life in front of your kids. Amen. Praise God. I just want to say thank God. Hallelujah for my children here today. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. We're just going to go ahead and get at it. Amen. Here today for a little while. How many of y'all going to help me preach for a few minutes? Amen. Book of Matthew chapter 11. Book of Matthew chapter number 11. In verse number 12. Matthew eleven twelve. 12. Oh, hallelujah. Jesus was talking here. And he said, and from the days of John the Baptist until now, until now. He wasn't just talking about that time that he was on the earth. He was talking about right now, this time. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence. And the violent take it by force. Book of Luke chapter 16 and 16. The law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, 
The kingdom of heaven is preached, and every man presseth. Everybody say presseth. Presseth into it. Oh, glory to God. I want to preach to us here today on just one simple word. Push. 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 Can we ask the Lord to have his way in the preaching of the word right now? Dear Lord Jesus, I come to you. God of heaven, I am incapable of doing this. Dear Lord Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, I need you, dear God, to give me your words, to give me your anointing, dear God. Lord, you said the anointing would destroy the yoke. It would break that yoke, dear God. I pray, Lord, you would send the anointing to break the spirits of doubt, to break the spirits of distraction, to break the spirits of unbelief, to break the spirits of hindrance, oh God. Oh, hallelujah, and I pray, Lord, you would speak to us the word of the Lord. It touch my mind and anoint my lips, dear God, and anoint our ears to hear what thus saith the word of the Lord. Dear God, we love you, Jesus. Come on, church. Come on, church. Hallelujah. Let's reach to him right now. Come on, let's make an effort right now. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, praise God, praise God. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. God bless you. You may be seated. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Amen. How many of you have ever, ever huddled at your kids? Hey, no pushing. Anybody ever done that? Amen. At some point in time, one of the other kids, glory to God, pushes their little brother, little sister. Glory to God. Hallelujah. A little push. Amen. How many of you have ever pushed a car that broke down? More times than I want to think about. Glory to God. How many of you have ever pushed a car with another car? I've done that before. I didn't like that either. Glory to God. How many of you have ever pushed something out of your way? How many of you have ever been in the woods and had to push your way through something? Amen. Brush, briars, weeds, grass, trees, whatever, you limbs, you had to push your way through it. Glory to God. Let me tell you something. In order to push something out of your way, you're going to have to make enough effort to make that thing move. Well, come on now. Hallelujah. In order to get from here to there... Amen, hallelujah, through the woods, you had to put enough effort to push those things out of your way. Oh, glory to God, in order to push that car, you had to exert more force, amen, against that thing than what it was putting out against you. Oh, glory to God, hallelujah. Can I tell you, in these last days, glory to God, there is a need for simple pushing Glory to God, against these spirits and against these things that have started creeping up in the church in these last days. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, it's not complicated to have church. You just need to get here and start pushing until the Holy Ghost moves. Oh, glory to God, hallelujah. Let me tell you, I don't care how nice the singing is. And I don't care how good the music is. I don't care how dynamic the preacher is. You're still going to walk out without your blessing unless you're willing to get in here and push until you get it. Oh, come on now, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, praise God, praise God, praise God. Hey, the Holy Ghost doesn't just fall unless you make an effort to get the Holy Ghost to move in. I'm telling you, God's not just going to come down and pour the Holy Ghost out on somebody unless they get up and start praying for it and pushing for it and seeking for it. Oh, glory, glory, glory. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, church. You know what we need to do tonight? We need to push a little bit. We need to press a little bit. I don't see, well, I'm tired. I'm tired too. We need to push a little bit. 
Oh, glory, glory, glory. Amen. There's so many distractions nowadays. Glory to God. I was thinking about it on the way down here. Everywhere you turn, there's a new distraction. Distraction, distraction, distraction. You know the only way we're going to deal with distraction is not stop and pay attention to it. It's push against it and push past it and keep pushing until we break through to the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on, somebody push right now. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Some things don't take much pushing. You can sit over there, glory to God, a door on on good, loose hinges. All you got to do is put a little pressure on it and it's going to open up. Amen. There's some services we come to church, man, and it just seems like, glory to God, the Holy Ghost is already here. Hallelujah, just already poured out, and we just walked right in the middle of it. Hallelujah, power of God falls, and we love services like that. But there's other services we come to. Man, we had a bad day at work. We had a rough day at home. Hallelujah, the car broke down. Our AC quit. Bills became due, and we were already out of money, and the bank's overdrawn. And we come to church with our mind off in Arkansas somewhere. And God shows up going, I want to do something for you. But we walk out without even realizing because we wasn't willing to push past the distractions. Well, come on, hallelujah. It's not complicated. Hallelujah, if you want to move of God, you better be willing to put out more pressure than what the devil's pushing against you. Say, well, I'm under a lot of pressure right now. Well, don't just sit there and collapse. Why don't you start pushing back a little bit? Well, come on, church. Hallelujah. Help me push just a little bit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say, well, I think y'all just hunker down right here. No, it's time to get up and start praying. It's time to get up and have a Holy Ghost tongue talking fit. It's time to get out and get a hold of God. It's time to push back against those things that's pushing on you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. It might require you doing something you ain't never done before. It might require you praying longer than you're used to praying. It might require you doing more than what you're used to doing. It might require a little aisle running out of you when you don't want to run the aisles. It might require some rolling the floor when you don't want to roll on the floor. It might require some jumping up and down when you feel like sitting down. I tell you, it might take a little bit more than what you want to put out. But if you want the victory, if you want the peace of God, if you want the Holy Ghost to move, you might have to push. Woo! Hallelujah! Help me, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. There's some people going to leave church without the Holy Ghost and die lost because they were not willing to push until they got the Holy Ghost. I've seen people that got down and prayed for five minutes and everybody started getting excited. But after about five minutes, they jumped up and ran back to their pew. And after a few services, they quit showing up for church. You know what happened? They were not willing to push until they got the Holy Ghost. And I've seen saints come in that were so burned down and weighed down that went to the altar and prayed about five minutes. Well, come on now. Or gave that little charismatic hand wave and that was all. Well, whoo, come on now. Are we apostolic around here or not? I'm here to tell you, Helen, when somebody comes in and needs a miracle or needs help, it ain't time to be quiet. It's time to push. Woo. Amen. Glory to God. When somebody comes in needing the Holy Ghost, but it's when it's time to have a Holy Ghost blowout. Oh, yeah, it is. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Everybody's sitting around just, amen, looking sideways. No, it ain't time for that. It's time to get out there and just blow the place apart and let the Holy Ghost come down and work. It's time to push when a minister comes to church. 
Amen. When somebody shows up that's got a need, it comes to the altar. Amen. It ain't time to just sit back there and go, oh, thank God it ain't me. But it's time to get in there and help them push a little bit. Help them press a little bit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a whole lot easier to get your help when the Holy Ghost is moving. Amen. Glory to God. Some victories take a lot of pushing to obtain. Glory to God, I've read, I, I, I love history. I've read history right now. Amen. My, my pastor, my, my dad and mom, they're back there in Philadelphia right now. Back in Pennsylvania. We took them to the airport Monday night. They flew out Tuesday. And uh, they, went to, uh, they went to see amen, some of the sites there. And one of the places they went to see was uh, Washington Cross, the location of Washington Cross on the Delaware River. And uh, they, they went and looked. And I, I've read all those stories. And I've studied those stories. And I've got books on those. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. And some of those things I, I read about. And I, some of them I'm like, man, glory to God. Them old pioneers and them old colonists back then, them old, them old boys, they just rolled right over them red coats. And then other stories I read about, it's like, man, they had to dig down and really fight to get that victory right there. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Amen. When Washington was crossing the Delaware, guess what? They, amen. You read about it in the history books. It's like, well, he crossed the river. And we've seen the pictures. He's standing there all resplendent in his uniform and in his coat. And they, they paddle across the river and they get across and they, they file up in ranks in their blue uniforms and march into town and shoot a bunch of people and capture the rest of them. And man, what a victory. That ain't exactly how it happened. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Man, they managed to fight their way across an ice-choked river in the dead of winter. Amen. Way up north where things freeze over solid, not like here in Oklahoma. They pushed ice away from the boats with poles to get across. And when they got there, there were some of them old boys that didn't even have any shoes on their feet and left blood in the tracks of the snow, in the snow as they marched by. Hallelujah. When they, but when they marched into town, buddy, hallelujah, they said, man, we've been running all summer long. We've been running all winter long. We've been marching through the snow, buddy. We ain't going back to camp without winning a victory here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And so, buddy, they charged into town, and they won one of the greatest victories of the war. I'm here to tell you, some of you need to come to church like that. Say, well, devil, you've been pushing me around all week. You've been pushing me around all year. But tonight, hallelujah, I'm going to go to church. And when I get through with you, devil, I'm going to stomp all over you. Woo! Hey, you need to come to church fired up and start pushing for some victory around here. Oh, come on, clap your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God. Now more than ever, we need to push every service for a move of God. Don't you let a service go by without touching Him. You need to push every time you come through the door. You need to push during pre-service prayer. Hey, pre-service prayer is everybody's job. I said pre-service prayer is everybody's job. Amen. There ain't nothing wrong with coming to the altar during pre-service prayer. Ain't nothing wrong with shouting during the pre-service. Ain't nothing wrong with shouting during the pre-service. Miles during pre-service prayer. Ain't nothing wrong with talking in tongues during the pre-service prayer. I'm telling you, it's time we started pushing during the pre-service prayer. Asking God to have His way and to move and to work. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory to God. And, buddy, it's time to push when the worship starts. Amen. Worship ain't just a musician's job. And it's not just a singer's job. Buddy, worship's everybody's job. It ain't just sister so-and-so that shouts every service job. Amen. It's sister so-and-so that don't hardly say amen's job too. Well, come on now. I ain't throwing rocks. I'm just preaching what I feel here today. It's everybody's job to have church when you get here. When somebody pulls up, they ought to hear you out there having church. Well, glory. Well, glory. 
Well, glory. Man, I just feel like something good's about to happen. I just feel like something good is on its way. He has promised he would open all of heaven. And brother, this could be that very day. Hallelujah. And I believe it can happen this very night if we're willing to push until we get it. Whoa, glory. Somebody shout glory. Somebody shout praise the Lord. Amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, let's have church tonight. Amen. You can be seated. Glory to God. Now more than ever, we need to push every service to have a move of God. Glory, glory, glory. Amen. Hallelujah. I know there's these aisles aren't real big, but you ought, to, you ought to get out and run them. I said you ought to get out there and run them. And it's not just brother so-and-so that runs them every service. It ought to be everybody's job to run the aisles every once in a while. And I don't mean once in a blue moon. I mean once ever so often pretty soon. Hallelujah. Well, come on, church. Glory to God. Say, what are you doing? I'm saying we need to push to have a move of God. Oh, glory. Glory to God. Let me tell you something. We ain't coming here and we can sing songs. Listen to me, devil. Or listen to me, Satan. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I like that song, by the way. You walked on me long enough. Now I'm going to walk on you. Hallelujah. We can sing that song. Amen. Praise the Lord. But let me tell you, devil ain't scared a lick of that song. He'll sit there and say, oh, you are? Amen. How many of y'all ever ever uh, uh, been, been in a fight or, uh, or been around a fight or seen a fight? That wasn't really a fight. It was one of those. They stand on the porch and the other stand in the road and they each holler at each other to come where the other are or the other is. Y'all ever seen something like that? The one out in the road calling the one on the porch. Well, if you just come out here, I'd show you. And the one on the porch is saying, well, if you just come up here on this porch, I'd fix you. They ain't interested in fighting because if they were, they'd have took off over there. <laughs> I've seen it before when they said, you just come on over here. And they did. You know what happened? They vacated the porch. And stood out in the yard and said, well, if you just come on over here, buddy, I about. And the other old boy's like, oh, yeah, I know. I've seen that a few. Let me tell you something. The devil's like that. Well, well come on now. You can stand there and, st- you can stand there and say, well, you just listen to me, devil. Let me tell you what I'm going to do to you tonight. Guess what the devil's going to say? All right, here I come. Let's see you do it. I'm telling you, when that happens, it ain't time to vacate church, buddy. It's time to buckle down and say, all right, I was just waiting for you to come up here. I was just waiting for you to show up because now, buddy, I'm going to have me a Holy Ghost fit all over this problem that's been bothering me. Woo! Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Well, come on. Somebody needs to worship God right now. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen. Amen. Glory to God. I saw a fight one time. These two old boys got to, they, they stood on the property line. They got to yelling at each other. They got to hollering at each other. They hollered and yelled, hollered and yelled. And one of them picked up a rock. The only problem was that was the guy that uh, the cops knew by name. And so he knew if he threw that rock, he was going to be in big trouble. But he wanted to throw it so bad. He picked it up. And the other guy didn't even run. Instead he ducked down. He ducked down and he looked at other old boy in the face. And he yelled, go ahead and throw it. I'm like, dude. And so, but apparently he wasn't too scared of him throwing it. Because if he was, I have a feeling as soon as he reared his hand back like that, I was like, Dude, he's got his hand out of the way. Now hit him. Maybe that's carnal, but hey. (laughs) Hey, Well, praise the Lord, everybody. (laughs) But uh, he turned around and threw the rock off to the side. And then they busted up. And then they all went and jumped in their trucks and left. Because right about that time, here come the cops. And that policeman walked up, and he stopped over there, and he started hollering up, calling that one old boy that picked up the rock by name. Well, he's already in the truck and gone. They weren't really serious about fighting. 
Because if they were, they wouldn't have stood there at the property line and just yelled at each other and cussed each other. If they were serious about fighting, buddy, they'd have been after it. Well, glory to God, but they, that one, he, didn't, he wanted to take a swing, but he didn't want to go to jail again. Hallelujah. So, he, buddy, he made a big bluff, and he, he acted like it. Let me tell you something. The devil's a lot like that. I think you'll find out, glory to God, uh, that when the devil says, I'm going to do something, he's just trying to bluff you out of just, amen, out of your blessing. He's wanting you to stay over there and just holler for a while. It's about time somebody got bold enough to say, all right, buddy, I'm going to come where you're at then. David didn't stay on the mountain, but he went where Goliath was. He said, I've been listening to you beller and yell. All right, buddy. If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you're going to get. And he took off. It's time for somebody to start pushing against those devils that's been harassing you for so long. Amen. So where did you see a lot of these at squabbles at? I saw them. My grandmother... I lived on the west side of Ada, and, that, and whenever she moved there, there was a lot of elderly folks, and, and uh, it was a pretty nice part of town. But uh, they started getting older, and some of them passed away, and then some of them, they moved off. The kids inherited their stuff. Well, the kids all live off out somewhere else, and so they just turned them all into rent houses. And uh, a lot of, uh, shall we say, unsavory people moved in. Started running all kinds of stuff in them houses. Now it's one of the worst sides of town, and uh, the cops still know people by name. But we used to uh, Thursday nights. We had service on Thursday nights, and us uh, kids used to switch off and stay with my grandma. And it, honestly, it's pretty entertaining. You start hearing some. Rawr, 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 rawr. Did we go hide? No, we want, went out on the porch. What are they doing? You know what? I never saw one of them people take a swing at the other one. But they sure did a lot of yelling. One day, I was, we was in there and heard a bunch of, heard some tires, whack, squall. A bunch of hollering and yelling went on. And we went out there and looked out. And there was three people come pulling up. Jumped out. They had car jacks. Not the ones they have now, you know, but the kind that you put a tire tool in, click, 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 click. And then you get it about so high and you're holding it steady and then it, it slips and goes, Grrr. and hits you on the hand. Y'all ever use one of those? Oh, yeah, I hurt my hand all kinds of times over there. Click, 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 click. And it would slip. It'd be wore out. You go, Grrr, whack. And I'd have a bloody spot on my hand where it, where it smashed it. They came out. They had those kinds of car jacks. They had all kinds of stuff. And they hollered at the guys on the porch to come to the road. And the guys on the porch hollered at them to come up on the porch. And every once in a while, one of them would act like they're going to walk around the car and take off up there. And as soon as they did, buddy, everybody hollered, well, you just come on ahead, come on ahead, come on ahead. I thought there's a whole yard in between you. Y'all serious about fighting? Why don't y'all just meet in the yard? They weren't interested in fighting. They weren't interested in, in fighting. Right. Believe it or not, a lot of people are that way with the devil. Right. Oh, yeah, they are. Right. They show up saying, now listen to me, devil. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. And that, that doesn't scare the devil one little bit. I said, that don't scare the devil one little bit. I think God's just looking for somebody that says, you know what? I ain't going to stand here and say, why don't you come over here, devil? I don't think I'm just going to sit here while you holler at me, devil. Buddy, I'm serious about winning this thing. I'm serious about leaving church tonight with my healing. I'm serious about leaving tonight with my help. I'm serious about leaving tonight with my help. With my miracle and my victory. I ain't going to sit here and just holler, buddy. I'm going to get out and start pushing until I win this thing. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, somebody reach to him right now. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let me tell you something. A lot of fights are won with that first punch. Oh, yes, they are. A lot of fights are won with that first swing. Glory to God. That's why they say if you're going to get in a fight, buddy, you better make that first punch count. And if you knock him down, don't you let him get back up. He'll get back up and pin your ears down. But if you knock him down, you better make sure he doesn't get back up. Hallelujah. That's the same way it is with the devil. Y'all hear me? I said it's the same way it is with the devil. Glory to God, you feel that devil coming at you, buddy. It ain't time to sit there and wait for him to swing. Say, well, I think I'll just defend myself. You're going to get beat up is what's going to happen. Glory to God, you feel that spirit coming on you. But it's time to rear back, get the word of God, and say, I'm going to church tonight. And when I get to church, I ain't just going to sit there. Buddy, I'm going to get there, and I'm going to make this punch count. I'm going to get in a push. I'll get there and shout. I'll get there and worship until I get my victory. <laughs> oh, yes. One reason why Adolf Hitler won so many battles is because he would take off and hit them real hard right at the beginning. Poof. Oh, yeah. And let me tell you something. I told you already some to some thing. Yes, some things take a little bit more effort. Oh, y'all quit laughing at me over there. I worked with an old boy. He used to be a pretty big, pretty big scrapper, and he was in the oil field. He was in a bar. He got into it with this one old boy. The one old boy beat up his 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 buddy. So this fella's there, sitting there in the bar, and looks over, and there's this dude sitting there. He said, "Hey." I heard you beat up my buddy the other night. He said, yeah, I did. I guess they had the feud going with this fella or something. He looked over at a co-worker of mine. He said, you're the one I really wanted. My co-worker had to make the mistake of opening his mouth. And he said, well, if I'm the one you wanted, well, let's just go outside. He said, all right. My co-worker said, Tim, he pushed away and started standing up. And he stood up and stood up and stood up and stood up. He said, and I thought, oh, no. He said, so we went outside. He said, and I knew I only had time for one lick. He said, I about had to hop to hit him. This guy was, was only about my size. He wasn't that tall. He said, so I, he said, I about had to hop. He said, but I hit him. He said, he started going backwards and landed up against the well house. He said, I looked at him and said, come on. He looked at me and said, he did. He did. He said, he come over and grab me by both arms and push me down to the ground and straddled me and held my arms to my side with both knees where I couldn't move. He said, and then he drew his fist back. He said, Tim, I don't know how I did it, but I somehow laying flat on my back managed to get my face turned all the way around in that dirt. He said, and he started hitting me in the back of the head. Boom. Boom. World sure sounds fun, don't it? I'm being very sarcastic right there. Yeah. Well, I think I'll backslide and go have some fun. Really? Really? That really sounds fun, don't it? Come in, I beat all the bits. What happened to you? I went and had fun. I don't think I want any of that kind of fun right there. But uh, he said he kept hitting me in the back of the head. He said everybody was standing around and said, let him up. You got him beat. He said, uh-uh. He ain't whipped and I ain't done until he says he's done. Y'all ever wrestled around and got your, got your brother down and said, wrestled around and got your, got your brother down and said, all or enough, whatever you said. I'd go hold him down and say, you got to surrender. As a little kid, you got to surrender. My brothers hated that. They'd say, I surrender, and then you let them up, and they found out they didn't really surrender. And they'd turn around, you know, and do something. But he said, I ain't letting him up till he says, till he's had enough. He said, I timed his hits. Boom. 
boom. So I right in between there. He said, I jerked my head around. I said, I've had enough. I put my head back in the dirt. <laughs> he said, all right. He stood up. He said, I got up my hands and knees. He said, he took one step and hauled off and kicked me right in the side of the head and gashed my head open. He said, that's how I got my face on the front page of the local newspaper. Let me tell you something. I know that's, it, that, that, that's a, a physical story. But let me tell you something. The devil's a lot like that. I said, the devil's a lot like that. Oh, yeah. You look at the devil and say, all right, devil, buddy, when I go to church, buddy, I'm, I'm going to win. You know what he's going to say? All right, let's go. And when you get to church, you better make sure that when you take that first swing and he's going backwards, you better not let him get set. Well, come on, church. What did the man of God tell the king of Israel? I talked about this back home the other night. Uh, he, he, uh, the, the, uh, the king of Israel came to see the prophet Elisha. Elisha was dying. And uh, the, the Assyrians and all that was, was, was ravaging Israel, was tearing them up and uh, just beating them. Every time he turned around, they was whipping them. And, uh, but the prophet Elisha said, hey, take the bow and arrows, king. He did. Y'all know the story? He said, open the window and shoot the arrow. And he shot it and he prophesied. and said, the arrow of the Lord's deliverance. And then he said, take the arrows in your hand. Y'all remember what he said next? He said, smite on the ground. And he smote three times and stopped. And the man of God got mad. He said, why did you stop? He said, now you're only going to whoop him three times and that's it. He said, you should have smote five or six times. And you would have whooped, you would have beat him until you had consumed it. Let me tell you something. When you come to church and there's some bugging you, it ain't time to take a swipe at that spirit. It'll come back Monday and it'll beat you into the dirt. You need to come to church and push. You need to press. You need to pray until you got that thing down and you've got your foot on the devil's neck. Oh, come on. Let's raise our hands. Let's love the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm wrapping it up. They'd come to the music here today. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Glory to God. We're dealing with a lot of things in, in today's world. We're dealing with a lot of hindrances. We're dealing with a lot of distractions. We're dealing with a lot of unbelief. Coming to church and there's a lot of unbelief. Amen. That's there. The Bible said Jesus in one place, he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Let me tell you, we deal so much with unbelief in this world. Oh, yes, we do. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me tell you something. My God is so big, he could take care of any situation. Heal any sickness and move and deliver anybody from anything that's got them bound up. I've seen God do it, and many of you have seen God do that for you. Hallelujah. But what happens when a new thing jumps on us? We start getting down in the dumps. We start getting depressed. We start coming to church and not even raising our hands. We start getting all, all down, and, and, down and, and feeling all sad. Why? Because that unbelief starts getting a hold of us. I'm here to tell you it's time to push past some unbelief. It's time to push past doubt. If God did it before, he'll do it again. If God did it once, he'll do it again. If God worked once, he'll work again. Oh, clap your hands to the Lord. Let's stand here today. Hallelujah. Woo. Amen, amen, amen. We come to church, our worry and cares bogging us down so much. The cares of this life. Weighing us down. Inflation and all kinds of things. COVID and everything, but it's just weighing us down. We come to church and we feel this tall. I'm telling you that these past few weeks have been extremely stressful weeks. I don't know about anybody else. They've been very stressful weeks. Glory to God. They've been extremely busy weeks. There's been all kinds of things just happen one right after the other. And there's so much happening. Amen. Uh, a week before last, I had my wife at the ER twice in, in four days. 
Glory to God because of all kinds of things. It's been one of those, one of those types of just times. Hallelujah. And so we get so much worry and care on our minds. And we come to church. And we come to church and we sit there. And a lot of times we sit there and just stare off into space. Got that thousand yard stare. Zoned out. And we, we might raise our hands. We might say amen and shout hallelujah. But down on the inside, if we were really honest, what we were really saying was, let's just get out so I can go home and try to get a little bit of sleep. I'm so tired. Oh, be honest. Be honest. We do that. Oh, yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. Down on the inside, we got so much stuff on our minds. Here a few nights ago, I woke up. My daughter's dog had something to do with that. She got this beagle, and that sucker loves to bark in the middle of the night. At what? Nobody knows. <laughs> I knew there wasn't nothing spooky around because the other dogs weren't making a sound. But she was sitting there barking her heart out, woke me up. In my mind, Sitarian just got to going crazy with everything, work and everything. I just got promoted over another department, and there's a lot of stuff I'm just, you know, trying trying to, to, to figure out on best policies and practices to do with. So my mind just got to going crazy. Brother, it just started tumbling. And I tried to calm myself down. Since I tried. Finally, I'm, after a while, I'm like, this is crazy. I ain't going to sleep a lick if something don't happen. I finally got up, went and sat in the recliner for a little bit, tried to reorient my brain. So much on my mind. You ever got so much on your mind when you're driving, you miss your turn, you don't even realize it? <laughs> a time or two? Time or two, three or four. I've done it. Don't ask my wife how many times. Just take my word for it. <laughs> yeah, don't ask her. She'll tell you, so don't ask. And I sit there and I'm like, okay, buddy, I'm getting my mind off of it right now. And sis, that's what I meant. I meant what I said. 30 seconds later, I'm still. Don't ask my wife that either. She'll tell you. Like, yep, he don't hear me. I'll be saying something to him, and it, I can tell he ain't listening. Oh, I think I hit something right there, brother. <laughs> oh, yeah, a time or two or three or four. Amen. But we get so much on our minds, so, so much. It, it literally will drive you literally crazy. That's why psych meds is so, so, so popular right now. Because just so much and, and people cannot physically, mentally, and emotionally handle it. Can, can you just take this tonight? God wants to take the stress and pressure off of you. If you don't get anything else here tonight, please get this. Please, God, I feel this here tonight. When the Bible said, casting all your care on him, he literally meant all. For he careth for you but sometimes church we gotta push we gotta push that woman with the issue of blood her miracle was right there all she had to do was touch God but she just had to push her way through till she did sometimes sis we just gotta push our way through all those worries and all those cares, how are we going to pay the bills? 
How are we going to take care of this? How are we going to put food on the table? What are we going to do about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? What about this? How, what are we going to do about that? All of a sudden this. What, oh, man, what about that? And we come to church literally and we're so tensed up and keyed up, tight, worried. And God steps in and goes, I want to take that off of you. You ever thrown, anybody ever hauled wood or something you went to throw a log? You, 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 went, you went to throw it up in the truck or maybe it was, I know they do round bells a lot, but you know, square bells, they still do something. You pick those square bells up, you have to use that knee, push it up in the truck, move the chair, throw the cat outside. You had to pick it up. Guess what? It took a little bit of effort to cast that thing. It's going to take some effort to cast your care on the Lord. It's going to take some effort to do. And God shows up and says, I want to take this. And But we sometimes come right in and go right back out and miss it. Because our mind's so keyed up on all this stuff. We need to push past it, folks. We need to push past it. God wants to take it off of you. But you might have to spend some time at an altar casting it. It's more than just a phrase, you might say. Brother, it's, it's going to take some action to do. You can walk right up. I can walk right up to that bale of hay and say, get in the truck. It'll act just like my kids. It'll sit right there until I take action. And then it gets in the truck. There's a lot of parallels I'm finding here tonight. You got to reach down, pick that thing up. And some of them's heavier than others. Some of them logs, I cut them, and then I go to move them, sis, and I'm like, what was I thinking? I should have cut that tree, not this one. And my kids are like, yeah, Daddy, you should have cut that tree, not this one. They hate it when I say, all right, children. Let me get my chains off. They're like, oh, no, because they know what's coming. Time to, pop, time to pile brush. We got to pick it up, put it on the pile. It might take some effort on our part to get our cares and worries and put them on the Lord. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, once you push your way through, it's worth it. That woman with the issue of blood was sure thankful when she pushed her way through the crowd that she did. Blind Bartimaeus was sure thankful he kept calling till God answered. And you'll be the same way. Can we lift our hands and love the Lord right now? Church, it's time to push. Some things going to take some effort. The obstacles don't just get up and move by themselves. You might have to push it out of the way. Blessings and victories and good church don't just come automatic. Nobody's got a license on good church. Come on, let's just let's just come on, let's just reach to him. Let's come on, let's take some time. It takes some effort, it takes some pushing. There's a lethargy spirit that's really crept in the last two years. It's not just going to live, folks. We're going to have to press and push our way past it. If you need a touch from God, you're going to have to push your way past it. If you need some strength, you're going to have to reach out to God. Press your way until you touch Him. I didn't say it was always going to be easy, but I did say it's going to be worth it. Come on, can we reach to Him? Can we reach out to Him? God wants to do it. God wants to do it. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. God wants to. Find a place. Can we reach to the Lord? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we want you. No one else will do in this place.
you're not always going to just Lord, feel on top of the world when you come to church. You're just going to have to push past it sometimes. You're not always going to feel spiritual. You're not always going to feel like the most holy thing that walked in shoe leather. There's certain days you're going to get up, you're just going to have to push past it all. more carnal than you do holy. You're going to have to push past it. Don't lay there and say, well, I ain't praying today. Get up. It's time to pray. It's time to push back. Come on, let's pray. Let's pray. Let's push. and worries start weighing down your mind. It ain't time to cave. It ain't time to collapse. It's time to start pushing back. Say, no, I'm going to put this on, on the altar. I'm going to put this in the hands of God. It's more than just a little phrase you might say. It's going to take some effort. You're going to have to push.
Jesus, it will happen. With Jesus, it will happen in this place. Chains are broken. Eyes are open. Miracles are in this place. Hearts are mended. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And hearts 
Reach out to him right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 